I've never given a testimony before, mainly because I never really felt like I had one, because I thought it was boring. <laughs> Um, I became a Christian as a child, and I grew up in a Christian family. I was very blessed that way. Um, I've got lots of family in the church, and I've got family in Cuba right now. And it's been such a blessing. And I've always had such a desire to see God move in big ways in me, in my life. And in hearing people talk about revival was always exciting. Um, just always the desire to be able to witness that. Um, and as I got older, I reaffirmed my position and my faith, and I was baptized, and I've spoken on a few occasions um, as a teenager. Um, the first I was 12, and I've had solid experiences where I can recognize with certainty that God was involved in experiences in his presence and his working in me and in my life. And that was a very memorable one was I was 12 and I spoke and I didn't really feel like I had anything to do with it. <laughs> um, and it was after it was over, I just, it felt like I had stood back and God had just taken over and the words had just come out. Um, but as you get older and everything else starts to kind of crowd in, um, all of the stuff of life um, as teenagers and, and on to college. And, um, I went to Bible college for a year and through some experiences there I was turned away from the church for a while. And I didn't really want anything to do with it. And then fear of what others thought of me began to matter more. And fear of others knowing what I believed. But I could never entirely walk away because I had had those solid experiences that I knew without a doubt had been God and his presence in my life. So I was always kind of in limbo. Could never really walk away because I knew what I had experienced. I knew, I could not know what I knew. But at the same time, I wasn't really prepared to do what I needed to to pursue a deeper relationship. And I never really grew. It was on an as needed basis get in a crisis, and I knew where I could turn, but then you'd end up back in the same spot again. It was very passive, and there was no passion. And then after university and college, then you become an adult. Being an adult is not as much fun as you think it's going to be. <laughs> There's a new job, you have bills, student loans, there's hurts and distractions, um, difficult work situations. We had a miscarriage in our first year that we were married. And health concerns. And I just got so dry. And so tired and so defeated there was no victory there was no joy and there was no peace and it was not what I thought being Christian was there has to be more. There has to be more than this. And 
I've been a Christian for most of my life. But what have I done with it? In the kingdom of heaven, how will my life have mattered? And in the last few years, seeing my family going down to Cuba, they had gone down a few years. They've gone down, I don't know, four trips or more. Um, but in them coming back and seeing the difference in them and the difference that's begun in our church and how much more of a family it's become. And I saw something in them and the experience that they had and I knew I needed that. That was something that I wanted. So I really felt last year that I was really meant to go on the trip. So I committed, I was one of the last minute ones going. It was very last minute getting my passport done. <laughs> um, and if I could have, I probably would have backed out because I was afraid. Afraid of the unknown. And afraid of just being a weak link spiritually down there. And before that, it was just practically impossible for me to pray. Because I just felt like there was a wall. And I was talking to nothing. And I would try so hard. And with um, our Bible study with deep waters, some of our homework... Um, was just to try to spend even an hour in the day just to be in his presence and to listen and to have that conversation. And I just couldn't seem to do it. <laughs> it was so frustrating. But I just knew I needed something more. There was an emptiness and I just had nothing to give to anyone. And so while we were in Cuba, um, one of the nights I had gone up front and um, Mark and Osmel were praying for me. While they were praying, I could see this wall. There were walls all around me, but there was just this one wall that I was really focused on. And I was trying desperately to get out. And I knew that there was something on the other side. And it was just like this stone wall and there was a little bit of ivy hanging over the top and I knew there was just, there was something good on the other side. And in there praying for me, um, I just began to knock that wall down, stone by stone, because I had built it myself for protection. But in the end, it became a trap. And as that wall came down, I could see on the other side, there was a garden. And the knowledge that that was a special place for me to come and to meet with him and to pray and spend that time in his presence. So I'd always felt like I was talking to a wall, because I had. It was a wall that I put there myself, but it was also preventing him from moving and working in my life. And from really having that closeness and that communication, and for him to fill me. And even throughout the week, we got to the final night. I still knew that there was just something more. I'd finally been broken down that wall. Things were open. But there was something more I still needed. And I was not going home without it. So I'd gone up front again for them to pray for me. 
And again, Mark and Osmel and all of our team and the Cubans, and they all gathered around. And they prayed. And prayed that I would receive the Holy Spirit and to be filled with his presence. And there was just such a peace and total surrender and just the sense of being completely filled and no longer having that emptiness. So Acts 5, 20 says, go stand in the temple courts, he said, and tell the people all about this new life. The message of this new life is this. I have never known his power and his presence as I have since then. I have never been filled as I am now. And I have never known the peace and joy and love as I do now. And I have never been able to pray and hear his voice as I can now. We all know the story of the seeds that are sown on different ground, different soil. And I always assumed that I was the good soil, just because I had never entirely walked away. I had never rejected what I believed. It was still there. But it wasn't living. It was just surviving. And looking back now, and I was reading those verses again recently, and I wonder what I was thinking. Because I read Luke chapter 8, 14 and 15. If I can find it here again. The seed that fell among the thorns stands for those who hear, but as they go on their way, they are choked by life's worries, riches, and pleasures, and they do not mature. But the seed of good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart, who hear the word and retain it, and by persevering produce a crop. I have not been the seed on the, soil, on the good soil. I've been the seed among the thorns. All of the stuff of life, all of the hurts and discouragements and frustrations and distractions and just worrying about everyday stuff, just slowly crowded in and choked out that life. And it may not have died completely, but in being a Christian for most of my life, I really didn't grow much at all. I didn't do anything with it. I didn't produce any crop. There was no evidence and no manifestation of his presence in my life. But I have experienced this new life in him. Amen. Has this last year been easy? No. It's been one of the most challenging in some ways. And there have been times when I've said this, you're asking too much. And I can't do this. He is the God of the impossible. Amen. He can make a way where there is no way. Amen. 
or he will give you the peace and the strength to come through it to the other side. And as those thorns attempt to crowd in and choke it back out again, I refuse to give up Amen. what I have gained. Amen. I desperately want to be the seed on the good soil. I want to persevere and to pursue. But this requires an action on my part, and it's a choice. And it will come up and up again each time the darkness tries to crowd in again and choke it back out. But I can become passive, and I can give in, or just decide to settle in where I'm at. Or I continue onward and constantly pursue him. God gave us free will, and he won't force himself on us to fill us. But he has so much prepared for each of us, and so much that he wants to give us if we will take that action and pursue it and receive it. It doesn't matter where we're at. We're all at different places in our walk, in our journey with him. And it doesn't matter where everybody else is at. But I never want to stop pursuing. I never want to stop wanting more. I never want to say, I've had enough. I'm good right here. I want to receive everything that God has planned for me. Everything he has for me to receive. All the plans and the purpose. And I want to be willing to do whatever it takes, no matter what. And maybe some of us are in that place of feeling so dry and defeated and empty and feeling that there has to be more than this. I have to have some kind of purpose in life. That there's something you need, something that's missing. Or maybe you just, along the way, you've just gotten dry and just need refilled. There's highs and lows, we're on the mountains and in the valleys. That's part of it. And maybe you're on the mountaintop right now, and you're in a really good place, and you're experiencing things that are exciting. but you still want more. Because I believe that there is always more. Amen. The more we grow, the more we learn in him, the closer we walk with him. He continually gives us more. Because he continually wants to fill us more with his presence. And I want to have the relationship that Moses and Enoch and the apostles had. To be so full of his presence and to see that manifested in the physical, to see the God move 
in big ways in me and in my life, in our church, in our towns. I know that while they're down there in Cuba right now, there's a lot of exciting things happening and things are moving. But the God that's down there in Cuba is the same God that's here. And he wants the same for us as anywhere else. And I believe that God has prepared something today for each and every person. And for anyone who is willing to receive it. So my question is just this. Do we want more? Do you want more? And what are you willing to do to get it? I want to be willing to go all the way, no matter what he asks of me. And that's really scary. <laughs> And in the past, I've always avoiding, avoided telling God, you know, I'll do whatever you ask. Because he might ask me to do something I really don't want to do. But after what I've experienced, and as I grow and hear his voice louder and louder, I want to do whatever he asks of me, whatever it requires. That is my story and my message of this new life. And in closing, I think we have another song here. I surrender all. 